I was born at Hubbard, Arkansas, five miles south of Prairie Grove. My father was Charlie Wilson. My mother was Myrtle Wilson. I had uh, my mother and father. I had uh, an older brother, an older sister, and then another younger, uh, older brother. But uh, I, my younger brother was nine years old when I was born. My dad was a farmer. We uh, milked cows and uh, just whatever was to do on a farm. We lived on the old Skelton home place. That's where I was raised. Uncle Bob Skelton, which is Guy Skelton's father. And I'm assuming Guy and them were raised there. I'm not sure. Well, I picked strawberries and I picked blackberries and I helped milk cows and I uh, had chickens, little chickens that I would raise and all kinds of things. Well, I would help mother when she washed. We washed on a tub down at the creek. We would uh, have a pot down there and, and heat the water on an open fire, and then we rubbed the clothes on a rub board. That was when I was young, very young. And then as we got older, we did get a, an electric uh, washing machine, but that was in the 1940s. Uh, went to Prairie Grove on Saturdays to the Trades Day and try to win a dollar. It was it was a big deal. Everyone from the whole area came to town on Saturday. You could hardly walk up the street from the main street up to the uh, Mock Park where they had the drawing. There were so many people. 62 was paved, I, when I remember. And the other roads out in the country were not paved. My earliest memories is coming in a wagon pulled by a team. Uh, from what, the five mile that we lived out of town. And it would take long enough for me to have a nap before we got there. <laughs> so I don't know how long that was, but a while. They had church in the schoolhouse at Hubbard on Sundays. And we always had Sunday school. Sometimes we had church if we had a preacher. Well, there was someone in the community a part of the time would be you know, able to preach and just different ones. Uh, at school, we played games, you know, blind man's bluff, tag, and that kind of thing. And in the wintertime, we skated on the uh, creek. Well, that Muddy Fork Creek started at the top of the mountain between Cove Creek and, and Prairie Grove. And that's where we skated was on Muddy Fork Creek. And that was fun. But we wore our shoes out because we didn't have skates, you know. We had no car as I was, you know, small. And uh, we had no telephones. We had no electricity till like 1940s something. We got electricity, and so it was just a different world completely. What was it like when you first got electricity at home? <clears throat> well, we had a light hanging down from the ceiling, uh, and we had a radio which had been battery operated, and it was one you could change over to electric. So we did have a radio, and that was when the World War II started, you know, and my dad was very interested in the news. We got to watch, uh, listen to a few stories, but mainly the news. They didn't, Mom and Dad didn't even get a refrigerator until after I was married, I think. So we had, you know, just electricity, and that was about well, it. I, maybe it was 48, the winter of 1948. I went to work for the telephone company, Prairie Grove Telephone Company, uh, as soon as I graduated high school in 1948. And uh, I moved that fall in uh, to town with Mrs. Allie Armstrong, uh, an old lady that had never been married, and she had a little house down here on Park Street. And uh, Pat Fennell, a girl that I knew from out Cove, uh, out the Hawkeye area, we had uh, one room there that we lived in, and I worked at the telephone company, and Pat worked at the uh, Carmen Drug Store, I think it was. And we lived there through the winter because mother didn't want me driving into town, you know. <laughs> the, the road was unpaved at that time. And uh, so that was what we did. Very primitive. <laughs> Wanda Allen's mother worked there at the same time. And uh, we just uh, answered the switchboard and rang numbers for people because we had no, you know, that was the only way you could call someone. You had to dial the operator, or not dial, you had to ring. It was the magneto system the old wall telephones and, and the ringer, yes. Uh -huh. And when, we, when someone wanted to make a long distance call, we had to call Southwestern Bell and place the call and then we wait for them to get the party on the line, call us back and we called our party here and they got on the line then. How long would that take? <laughs> Depended on, on different things, sometimes quite a while. But we had some people that got pretty 
uh, perturbed of us, you know, when we couldn't get their phone calls in right away. We had a ticket that we filled out with the time, the name of the person and the, uh, the time and everything. And then I worked in the office uh, filling those, I mean, filing those. And uh, then once a month, I helped send out the statements and everything. So Mr. Parks, Mr. Jim Parks was there. And he and I did all of that. <laughs> well, from uh, when I went to work in 1948 until uh, my daughter was born in July of 1952, and I wasn't working when she was born. So, <laughs> well, no one made long distance calls hardly ever unless it was necessary. They were expensive, you know. And uh, so, and they didn't do a lot of talking in the community. Uh, if they wanted to call, Lugan Buell's funeral home or Dr. Mock's clinic or the grocery stores or something like that, they would use the phone. And I guess a few people did talk, but on those party lines, it was kind of hard to get the line sometimes because someone else was talking. They were called farmer's lines. The people owned the line themselves and paid rent for just the, the service of having it. Oh, well, I went to school at Hubbard, the school there where I was born, right close to it. Uh, through the eighth grade, because it was a one-room schoolhouse with one teacher and probably 30 students, something like that, were first through eighth grade. Then when I graduated eighth grade, I came to Prairie Grove, had to walk about a mile and a half to catch a bus uh, into Prairie Grove, and uh, I uh, then they consolidated with Prairie Grove, and the bus came closer. I didn't have to walk that far the last two years, and I graduated uh, in 1948. The one at Hubbard was one room, just one room, and uh, we had no electricity when I started there. We had no water. We had to walk down the road and get a bucket of water and bring it to school. And, and uh, we had outdoor toilets. And, uh, you know, it was very primitive. But then when I started the high school, it was a little more, you know, we did have electricity. <laughs> and, but we still had an outdoor toilet at Prairie Grove when I started there. So it was different to what it is now. At Prairie Grove, it was three-story brick. and. Uh, well, it was getting old by that time, but it was still okay. We had, uh, I don't think we were using the top story actually at that time. It was kind of getting dilapidated. Uh, but anyway, they finally tore it down. I don't remember what year, but uh, Mrs. Holmes was our, the main teacher I remember. And uh, she could tell you about things. Well, she was a tall, slender lady, and uh, her husband was the mayor of Prairie Grove, Mr. Uh, Holmes was. And um, she, uh, she was tried to be strict, but the kids didn't pay a lot of attention to her sometimes, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but she was a good teacher. I think she taught English, I believe. Walked downtown and got a hamburger and a Coke if you had a dime at the lunch hour, because we didn't have a lunchroom when I first started at Prairie Grove. And uh, then we would uh, play basketball on the dirt court and uh, the boys, well, some of the girls played baseball, maybe, or softball, but I never did. And the boys played baseball and just, you know, what, whatever we had we could do. Well, we had lots of businesses in Prairie Grove then. The Southern Mercantile, you know, they had all three departments, grocery, hardware, and uh, dry goods. And uh, then we had three or four more grocery stores. I, I remember... Uh, Oh goodness, and the meat market, and uh, that, and then there was another, oh, the, uh, the uh, dime store, the Harlan's Variety store, which was a dime store, we had that, had uh, the uh, jewelry store, Herschel Clark had the jewelry store, uh, <clears throat> Dixon Saddlery, and there was uh, several different cafes, I can't remember all of them, the eat shop was where we usually got to get our hamburgers and so forth. There were several places. That, well, we got married in October of 1949. Uh, we moved down here on Mock Street in two rooms of the house that's still down there where uh, the Green family live. Uh, we lived there, uh, let's see, that we got married in October 49, and our daughter was born in uh, July of 1952. And uh, then we moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and spent eight years out there before we came back and bought the farm uh, where I'm still there. 200 acre farm out here uh, past Center Point, uh, about four miles from here. And I've been there since 1960. 
and we we grew chickens. We had chicken houses at one time for about 18 years, and then we milked cows and had then quit that and started just cattle, you know, uh, selling at the sale barn and such as that. Uh, so what did your husband do? He was a carpenter, an electrician, uh, an auctioneer, uh, well, just a farmer and all of that. What was his name? Earl Reeve. Earl Reeve. Mm -hmm. And your your son? I have Randall, is my oldest son. Well, Janice is my, my oldest child is Janice, my daughter. Her name is Janice Langrell. And then I have Randall Reeve is my uh, oldest son. And then Tracy Reeve is my youngest son. And they all live in this area. Janice lives up on the farm up there. They have a home up there. It was a good life. And we, you know, uh, just did like everyone else. We'd go visiting and go to church and, and <clears throat> just anything that, you know, like families would do. Goodness, they fished and, you know, we had ponds and they fished and they went swimming in the summertime and just uh, like all the other kids did, I guess, you know, visited back and forth. We would go to a drive-in theater occasionally and take the whole family, you know, and uh, then we would uh, play cards with other couples and just uh, visit and all that stuff. I've known lots of people in Prairie Grove. Uh, I don't know as many anymore because there's so many people that are that were not native here. They've come in the last several years. But I've always enjoyed everyone and I've enjoyed the Senior Center immensely because I've been coming here over 10 years and it's been a good place. And uh, I go to school, I go to church at New Sulphur, uh, which is out in the area there. And, you know, just know a lot of people and enjoy people. They had uh, what they call the old Fed, the old time reunion, the old uh, uh, from Civil War. You know that's the way it started. They called it the, uh, that. And then in my er years, they had a carnival up there once a year, not not the clothesline fair, but just a, a reunion they called it. But there would be a carnival there, and uh, then. Uh, of course, another thing, it was a good place to park when you were out with your boyfriend, you know. <laughs> Everybody, there, it would be full in my high school years. Well, it was a good place to, for my kids to grow up, you know, and for the, it's, it's just been a good, good area. I've enjoyed it.